uh, this is the applications track of this uh, evening. Uh, the first speaker um, will be Grace, and uh, uh, she's from Int uh, Intel, and will be uh, talking about developer experience. The title of the talk is Developer Experience and Lessons Learned in Building, building Real-World uh, uh, Spark Applications. Please. Okay, uh, thank you, and uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, um, this is Grace Huang from Intel uh, Big, Ta Big Data Technology, okay? And uh, so, as you know that, uh, already, you already noticed that top, uh, the top title, and uh, okay. Um, before that, actually, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to mention that it is the teamwork, so I really thanks for all those great guys and all those contributions in the last six, six months, okay? Okay, now let's start. And uh, basically, as we all know, Spark is just like its name, sparkling and dazzling, especially in China. And uh, during the past years, we were part partitioning with several big websites in China and uh, to help them to build some real-world big data analytics. And, uh, we and uh, we found that more and more users are really, uh, not only pay attention to it, and who really cares about it and really request it, so, so in China, uh, especially in those big websites, they are so open to embrace all those new technologies, especially something like Spark, and uh, since it can make their application run better and better, and uh, yeah, with, with great performance improvements. So they have already used Spark along with the big elephant, I mean the Hadoop, uh, in their data center, in their, in their real world, I mean in their production environment. And uh, so, according to our experience, there are totally three areas they focused and they cared about by using Spark. The first one is the iter iterative and complex machine learning and graph analysis. The second one is the real-time analytic processing. So uh, in, in the last year and also the talk uh, yesterday, I just shared some, some, uh, some background for those real-time analytical processing framework. And the last one is the complex and the in, in, uh, interactive OLAP or business intelligence. Okay, and uh, in the last year Spark Summit, uh, we shared some experience and also how to help our customer to build the, the real world big data application by using Spark. In case uh, some of you might miss that, here is the link you can find what we present last year. And, uh, and today, I would like to introduce more work about how to improve those user experience, how to improve the performance uh, while using the Spark in their, uh, in their customers' uh, production environment and so also for those real-world applications. Okay, um, so here are totally four key lessons we learned. And uh, basically all those key lessons are quite related to those key components in a server, right? Say memory, network, disk, and also the CPU. And uh, so actually, I don't, I, I don't want to touch all those hardware domain. What I need to share is what we have learned in how to optimize software to have a efficient and also well-balanced system and to improve our performance, oh, sorry, improve the Spark's performance and also to improve the user experience. And of course, memory is the first priority. Since, uh, as you all know, Spark is typical in memory computation framework, right? And uh, besides that, we also find in network and also disk I.O. is quite important for the Spark performance. And the last one, of course, CPU, and since most of cases are CPU bound, and I think um, CPU, Optimized computation can bring a lot of benefits for Spark, but also can bring a lot of benefits for Intel for us, right? Okay, so let's start one by one. And the first way is to manage the, uh, man, manage the memory. And uh, so as, we, as I mentioned, Spark is commonly regarded as the in-memory computation framework. So how to make the memory spaces efficient, efficiently used and also how to use it more smartly is, of course, the of course, the um, number one topic, right? So here, let's see some example. So this is the real-world case which will help a customer to do the graph analysis. analysis. So the, 
the basic idea behind it is to compute the association between two connected dots that are un unhop away. Uh, say find, find some certain relationship between friend, friend and friend and friend of friend, essentially. And uh, so here, uh, this, for this case, we can implement it by either bagel or graphx. Actually, we, we have done it by both. According to our experience, we found that in, by using bagel, it will request much more memory spaces since it also caches some message data. And uh, on the other side, while using the graph X, we find that uh, the memory space is not so that uh, used, if, I mean, not, not used efficiently. And uh, so it can introduce certain GC impact. And uh, by the further exploration, we found that the root cause, there are two root causes. The first one is uh, the memory cannot be freed timely. Another one is because of the vertex duplication, especially for those sparse, sparse graph in graphics. Now let's see our solution. So for the first one, actually we, what we have done is to, to do the partition level and persistent. So as you, uh, as you, you all know, originally in Spark, it, it does the unpersistent based on those RDD. And uh, let, me see, let me show some animation here. And, uh, and uh, here you can see uh, during the RDD computation, and uh, when, if only those entire RDD get compute, computed, you can do the, you can do that unpersistent. So the maximum man managed usage is here. It's demos here, and uh, let's see, let's see it in a different way. If we can do the partition, I, I mean, if we can do the unpersistent in the partition level. It's changed a lot. Let's see the animation here. Here, the difference where we, we can do the we can do the unpersistent on in the partition level, if we can got single partition ready and we can remove that input, I mean based on that partition level. And from that you can see here the maximum manage, memory usage is quite is is quite less, right? So this is the first solution we, we help to reduce, reduce the memory usage and to free those memory spaces timely. Oops. So, an <coughs> <coughs> sorry for that. <coughs> and uh, another is we try to reduce the vertex duplication. As we mentioned, we found that there is certain duplication, I mean, vertex duplication, it is because as you all know, the graphics uses vertex cut. So basic idea is it replicates all those vertex data across different partitions. And in our case, we try to store certain information, I mean the extra data in those vertex data. So there will be a lot of, lot of uh, data store uh, required by the vertex itself. And besides that, we try to update those vertex data in each round. So since the, those data, uh, so those data is immutable, so we try to do the, uh, we try to create a new one while we're doing the updates. So they will introduce more vertex duplication. But if we can do it in another way, say edge cut, and the, 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 the total memory spaces will be uh, will require uh, much more, le uh, much less. Sorry, and uh, so basically, it is just to replicate those edge data across different partition. So, according to our case, those edge data, say the relationship between two dots, I mean the relationship between two friends, uh, won't be won't be changed, and so they will they can be shared between different rounds. So, and another another thing is the. Most of our input data, I mean, the graph itself is sparse. So there won't be a lot of edge, edge data, so the edge number is very small. But the only limitation here is those computation depends on single endpoint. So if your computation is depends two, sing, I mean, two endpoints, maybe you, you cannot choose the edge cut. But in our case, it won't be, it, it, it won't be a de big deal. So. So we find that maybe the edge cut is, is, the, is the better solution for us to have the less storage space requirement, okay? So here we just, uh, we ju we just implement those ideas and, uh, we, and the first way is to support the edge cut partition policy. 
The other one is to support the partition level, the RDDN persistent. According to our test, test the data, I mean we rerun those real-world applications here and get the performance data here. You can see after the optimization, we only used half of the memory spaces. And uh, since we avoid a certain GC impact, so the total performance got 1.58 times speed up. And uh, you, from the, I'm sorry, from the, the right side chart, you can see the, run, uh, the total memory for input for the runtime. And uh, the after optimization, after the optimization, it gets more, uh, much less, right? So this is our first learning. If we can save the memory space so we can speed up the uh, final Spark workload uh, performance a lot, okay? Now let's see this, uh, another example. Here it is another real world case. It is basically, it is calculate top and video ranking case. Okay, here our a customer really uh, generate those video ranking board uh, both hourly and daily. So we try to use Sharp to implement those chain ETL and also those complex analytical queries. According to our experience, join is the, frequent, is the most frequent used and its optimization matters a lot. Besides that, the same memory part, um, it is quite hard to fit the entire table in the memory. So what our solution is to, to use the Tachyon as the off-heap cache. And uh, according to our experience, it, is, it performs bad, much better than the on-heap on solution and also better than the five-system five cache. And uh, besides that, we have to a lot, lot of things uh, to use the Tachyon in the shark. Uh, for example, we have disabled some certain recache uh, policy for those read ones case. And uh, also we have, uh, we have also enabled the speculative, uh, speculative mode in Shark. And besides that, we reduced those replication, I mean the checkpoint file replication number. Both of them can speed, speed up a lot um, for the Spark workload, I mean the, for the Shark workload, okay? So here this sample tells us uh, if we can use some Use, use the cache maybe smartly or choose some proper cache policy instead of some, the, the default one, it can bring a lot of benefits. Okay, now let's see the second case. Basically is to avoid the network. Now let's see the example. Uh, we also take that graph analysis, analysis case as example. So we find that in, the, in this case, we found that the first stage in the application, it has poor data lo locality. So the basic, basic, uh, the basic cause is here is while the Spark try to do the task and, uh, assignment, it lacks of certain maybe executor information. Uh, since at that time, maybe not all, the, all those executors are ready. So all those tasks are assigned to the pending tasks with no preference. So it will cause extra network traffic and it will also even cause some single node network bottleneck. I will show some data in the next, next slide. And besides that, if even you can get enough executor information, you still, you, you, still, you still have some certain issue there. The first one is um, in each executor, you, he cannot assign those no, node local tasks as many as possible. So the, the second one is when it fails to do the node, local load task, it needs maybe certain pause, um, by default is three seconds, um, to make it titled, entitled as the any. So that is the two, two root cause make the performance not very good. So according to this, we, we propose two solutions to, to improve that performance. The first one is we, we, we offer a certain kind of threshold to wait until enough executor ready and uh, the second one is we prioritize the, the local lo locality list for each executor so that to ensure that all those executor can, all those executor can assign tasks, especially for those node local tasks as many as possible. Now let's see the data, not let's see the test result. Basically we run our, our use case, I mean the, uh, the customer case on the four node cluster and you can see here, in the first stage, I'm sorry, maybe it's too small. And in the first stage, um, the pool locality will cause some extra network bandwidth, right? And uh, especially for that, for that second stage, you can find 
um, since all those tasks are assigned to a single node. So for the rest of node, they need to fetch those shuffle out output data from that single node. So the network ban bandwidth on that single node is come to 100% utilized. It is the, it's the single, single point maybe bottleneck. So after we optim optimize it, you can see the locality is much better and there is no extra network there and uh, also the for network bandwidth for the second stage is quite balanced. So total runtime reduced to 30 seconds and we, ha we have totally 1.75 times speed up. So in a word, to improve the scheduler for better locality saves certain network bandwidth and also performs faster, okay. Okay, now let's see the second one, oh sorry, the third one. Basically it is, uh, it is the case to improve this Kyle and uh, here also take that top and video ranking case. There are several, we found that it, for our customer it is a big, big question for, for them, how to define a proper reduced number. Since for each query there are, there are several stages, but for the end user it only has one chance to set up, to, to configure that task number, redu I mean the reduced task number. So if, we, if they set it too small, you will find some out of memory exception. If we set it too large, you can see the performance degradation. So here is the test result. Uh, on the, I mean on the left side, uh, left side table, you can see we increase the reduced number in the first column and the, the, the total runtime is become longer and longer. So to explore the, the root cause here, we try some micro benchmark for the shuffle write. And you can see the chart on the right side and for different reduced number, you can see that the first performance is get poor and poor. I mean, the, the line upside and the, the line, another line is show the disk bandwidth. The disk bandwidth become, become lower and lower. So basic idea is there is lots of random IO access and uh, more outstanding IO requests that causes lower disk, disk IO bandwidth. So we need to do the further consolidation in the shuffle, shuffle write and maybe as the uh, as the Patrick did this morning just mentioned, uh, maybe sort based the shuffle in Hadoop MR is the possible solution. So we do some POC, POC implementation here. Uh, according to our POC implementation, there are only one consolidated output file, output file in the shuffle write. And another thing is we just use some shuffle light workload, say word count. Uh, even for that shuffle light workload, by using the sort based shuffle, you can see there's still got performance improvement. And the last one, but not very, also the very important one is we solve that scalability issue. You can see uh, the circle, those circle bar on the left side. Uh, while we try to re in increase the reduced number, the total running time become longer and longer. But by using the sort, I mean the circle bar on the right side, by using the sort based shuffle, you can see that the running time doesn't don't change a lot. Okay, actually, actually we are still working on this with the cloud engineer to do more performance improvement and to, to finish our POC implementation maybe to, and in the near future we hope to open source it and contribute, to, contribute back to the community. Okay, the last one is to optimize the computation. Um, basically it is another, uh, we also take that um, top one video ra ranking case. Uh, from the right side, from the right side example, you can see it is just a subpart of the real world query from the, our customer side. You can see there are lots of complex and repeated ex expressions in the real world case, right? So our idea is to do the code generation optimization based on the shark, imp shark implementation. According to our experiment results, there are totally 20% improvement. Uh, I mean, not for the micro benchmark improvement, it is for the real world case improvement so you can find those workable branch from the GitHub. Okay, another, another optimization is still on the computation part. Here is the graph clustering case. Uh, it is essentially a community detection problem. We group, we group the videos into cluster and for further recommendation. And here we found that the customer really needs some sparse metrics library. Besides that, and there are lots of complex metric operations. So th those of them, those of them dominate the CPU time, and according to our uh, according to our learning, we try to we try to use some Intel mass kernel library to improve that computation, 
And by using that, you can find the total running time saves a lot, and it got at least two times speed up. And especially for one job, it got eight times total, to, I mean, to performance improvement. So in this case, you can find if, if we can improve the computation, I mean, you can make the computation more efficiently. Of course, in the Spark, um, you can see the direct uh, benefits and also performance gains. Okay, so say the future, and uh, so uh, we are still focusing on the more optimizing, uh, uh, op operable and uh, operable and the usability case, and now we are trying to improve the Spark streaming, also Spark SQ, and, uh, and also the better talking integration. Besides that, we still focus on the performance part, and uh, now we are collaborating with the cloud engineer to do the soft-based shuffle, as I mentioned before, and, and also we are focused on the cloud storage. We hope to maybe someday we, uh, Spark framework can leverage the SSD performance. And besides that, we hope to improve the scheduler, and also we hope to improve join aggregation optimizing since we found that join and aggregation f functionality is mostly frequently used in our real world cases. Okay, and uh, so, okay, last. Uh, we, at last, as a brief summary, and actually, and we already found that Spark plays an important role in the big data analytics and uh, several lessons we learned. Of course, memory is the key, but actually it is not the, the single only key factor there. So we hope to improve not only the memory part and also the network the scale and also the, uh, the computation part. And, uh, and for the future, we hope to continuously mat mature the spark for next gen big data analytics. We hope uh, maybe from three, three focus, uh, first is to make it full function ready for the enterprise and also improve, improve its stability. Besides that, we hope to improve its performance, especially for, to, to, to get better performance uh, beyond its significant, significant performance uh, improvements. And okay, so the last one is we need your help. Uh, now we are trying to de develop some work workload and benchmark. I mean the big data workload and benchmark. So we really, we really need your voice and inputs. Uh, maybe we can need, uh, we need to know more use cases to, to, to accomplish those workloads and benchmark definition. And besides that, we hope to optimize Spark and also all those Spark stuffs. And so uh, we'd like to maybe hear your voice and also. Get your uh, get your sh sharing and any questions free free, uh, free, free uh, sorry free feel sorry <laughs> free feel to contact us okay that's all for sorry I for yeah just uh, okay that's all for this and any question for that. We have time for one or two questions. I have a few questions. Uh, one of them is, uh, you know, maybe some more details about how Tachyon was used to improve the caching and you know, yes. performance. Uh, also, uh, MKL, uh, you know, is that Intel um, library? Mass and Intel some, Mass Kernel yes, Library. Some, yeah. And then, what kind of graphs uh, were used in the analysis? So you described about graph clustering and things like that. What was the nature of the graph? Okay. So, uh, so I'm not quite sure the. The, the last question is... What was the nature of the, the graph data that you were talking oh, about? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, and basically, uh, yeah, I know it goes through that. And the first question is, uh, 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 the Tachyon cache performance, yes, actually. Uh, actually, in our case, we try to cache the, those cross queries data. And basically, if uh, here, we, uh, we also do some checkpoint there. So based on that, uh, at about maybe 10% 10 performance improvement, but if we can remove those checkpoint fire, uh, it can maybe much more better. So according to the micro benchmark, it at least 300%, um, sorry, 300 times speed. But, but if we reduce those replication number, I guess maybe 100 at least. And so another question is MKL, MKL yeah, okay. Uh, actually, it is the native mass kernel library, and we just use it to to maybe uh, to implement those metrics, maybe sparse mat matrix. And besides that, we do some mm, complex computation by using that. Um, but both of them are Gen, Gen I core, so native, native code. And uh, basically, um, 
So, uh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, actually, it is the Intel software product. So, I, so it, it won't be maybe it won't be open source. But I think it it won't cost you a lot to use it. Yeah. And so the last one is the yeah the graph. And basically, uh, all those graphs are sparse. And we just uh, we just keep those. Uh, and so the connective is very weak. Uh, so that is what we found. So we need to replicate those those edge data instead of the, those vertex data. Uh, yes, I mean that yeah, the connective itself is very weak. Um, thank you. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm gonna yes. uh, cut the questions short and go to the next talk because we we um, we are a little bit behind. Next talk.